Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about phenylketonuria. So phenylketonuria is one of the genetic disease caused by the problem in amino acid metabolism pathway. Phenylketonuria is quite rare and its frequency of occurrence is 1 out of 15k, right? So it's pretty much rare. Now phenylketonuria occurs due to a problem in phenylalanine metabolism and phenylalanine metabolism is very important for our body. So let's take a look at phenylalanine metabolism to understand this process. Phenylalanine gets converted to tyrosine with the help of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now just like any other enzyme, phenylalanine hydroxylase is encoded by a gene and this gene is known as phenylalanine hydroxylase gene. Now this gene gives rise to the mRNA of this phenylalanine hydroxylase which forms a functional protein. But in case of phenylketonuria, there is often a mutation in this phenylalanine hydroxylase gene which re results in production of a phenylalanine hydroxylase which is non-functional. As a result, we don't see tyrosine production in case of phenylketonuria. So phenylalanine cannot be hydroxylated to form tyrosine. Tyrosine is very important for our body's physiology. I'll tell you why. Tyrosine can produce dopamine in the brain, which is a very essential neurotransmitter. It can give rise to T3 and T4 hormones in the thyroid gland. So it's also important for endocrinology. It also gives rise to melanin, which is the skin pigment. Tyrosine is also involved in production of catecholamines, such as epinephrine, norepinephrine in the adrenal cortex. So all these things make tyrosine very important. In case of phenylketonuria, there would be a deficiency of tyrosine because phenylalanine cannot be converted. So that leads to a barrage of problems. First of all, in the brain, Tyrosine can give rise to many neurotransmitters that we have looked norepinephrine, epinephrine and dopamine. So when tyrosine levels are low, all these neurotransmitters won't be produced. Moreover, when phenylalanine level is high, it prevents tyrosine and tryptophan to be uptaken by the brain. Let me remind you that tyrosine, tryptophan and phenylalanine are uptaken by the brain with the same transporter. If phenylalanine level rises abruptly, so it would occupy all of these transporter in the brain and won't allow tryptophan or tyrosine to get in. So these amino acids, that means tryptophan and tyrosine, they are precursor for serotonin and dopamine. And as a result, the brain would have low level of dopamine and serotonin. Collectively, all these phenomena lead to a cognitive impairment in phenylketonuria patient and this is pretty normal. Other symptoms involving phenylketonuria um, includes intellectual disabilities, seizure, behavioral problems and mental disorders. Now let me tell you that phenylketonuria is an autosomal recessive. That means if father and mother are the carrier, at least uh, they have one copy of these mutation, then 50% of their children would be carrier, 25% uh, would be unaffected and 25% would be totally affected. Now phenylketonuria screening is generally done after the week of birth. I mean at least in the advanced countries, the first world countries. So actually a blood sample is taken from the heel of this uh, baby and that is analyzed for phenylalanine levels. If phenylalanine level is increased in the blood, that is indicative of phenylketonuria. Further genetic testing is done to confirm this observation. Now let us summarize um, what we can learn about uh, phenylketonuria. So first of all, phenylketonuria level uh, increase in brain can lead to toxicity in the brain. Now till date there is no cure of phenylketonuria because it's a genetic disease. However, if diagnosed early, then proper dietary plan can save the baby or save the brain from these kind of adverse effect. Obviously, since the body cannot metabolize phenylalanine in this condition, so the diet which is rich with phenylalanine, these foods should be avoided such as fish, meat, dairy products, etc. Other than that, the diets which are 
uh, low in phenyl alanine level such as many leafy vegetables and fruit can be taken now let me tell you phenyl alanine uh, phenyl alanine in absence of being converted to tyrosine now gets converted to phenyl pyruvate by the help of transamination reaction so any amino acid undergoes transamination reaction so the rate of transamination increase when phenyl alanine hydroxylase is not present or non functional so phenyl pyruvate gets further converted to phenyl acetaldehyde or phenyl ethanol so this phenyl pyruvate phenyl acetaldehyde phenyl acetate these things are phenyl ketones right or we can understand these phenyl ketones are actually secreted into the urine and the presence of these phenyl acetate lactate gives urine a mousy odor this suggests that phenyl ketonuria simply means phenyl ketones in the urine and the nomenclature is pretty much pretty much apt right now let me tell you that phenyl keton phenyl ketonuria also could be associated with hypopigmentation because phenyl alanine give rise to several intermediate in this biosynthetic pathway which is dopaquinone and dopaquinone gets converted to pheomelanin or eumelanins these are responsible for our skin tone and skin color so whenever we don't have phenyl alanine to tyrosine conversion this pathway is abrogated as a result the skin pigmentation can be perturbed or the skin pigmentation can be uh, low or the skin skin could be hyperpigmented so all these are consequence of phenyl ketonuria so let us talk about the summary phenyl ketonuria is one of the metabolic disease which is frequently occurring um, and it's and it is due to the problem in amino acid metabolism pathway so the in, key enzyme which is involved in this process is phenyl alanine hydroxylase which converts phenyl alanine to tyrosine and this particular enzyme is non functional due to the genetic problem phenyl ketonuria also is associated with cognitive impairment and several neurological problems phenyl ketonuria is not curable however if diagnosed early it can be managed and with proper dietary plan a person can survive for a long time and these met mental retardation can uh, be prevented in that case as well so all these are summary of phenyl ketonuria i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you